Welcome today, as my dad David shares from his heart this short, biblically-based devotional. David is a speaker, author, former pastor, songwriter, and founding director of Youth with the Mission, Montana. He is also the author of the song, In Moments Like These. This song appropriately describes this podcast, and I know his message will be encouraging to you. I never spent a day and night alone in the woods until a time in mid-July of 1978. I had a good friend drop me off about 10 miles from our Big Fork, Montana home. It was at a roadside path near the base of Mount Aeneas, a mountain named after a famous flathead Indian chief. From there, I would hike about a mile back into the thick forest where I'd find a small clearing and set up camp, which didn't amount to much. I had only brought a few things along with me. I carried a backpack with a sleeping bag on top. Inside my pack were two canteens of water, an extra coat, a small hatchet for collecting firewood, a flashlight, a brand new spiral notebook, a couple pens, and my Bible. My reason for being there was to get alone and to have a quiet time with God. At the time, Kathy and I were both having questions about God's future for us. We had been very certain that God had called us to Montana. We hadn't forgotten about the amazing dream our California pastor had shared with us, about Kathy and I living in an encampment of sorts, somewhere in the mountains, and there leading a ministry for young people, young Christians that would come from all parts of the world, and then go out and minister to the world. But now, after six years of living and loving, serving God and His people in Montana, we were both feeling that God had some important things He wanted to tell us. So on that certain day in July, Kathy and I agreed to set some time aside and listen for our Father in Heaven to speak to us. Kathy would try to do that during the day, but especially after the kids went to bed that night. And I would do that out in the wilderness. And that day and night... Kathy at home and me in the forest, would prove to be life-altering. I'll tell you why shortly, but before I do, I wanted to tell you what happened to me just yesterday. Once again, as often happens when I'm in a state of pause, I heard a voice whisper a word to my inner ear. The word I heard was sojourner. Hmm. What made me believe that this was a whisper from God was because sojourner is a word I can't remember using or remember it being spoken to me in 20 years maybe. I have, of course, read it in the Bible, so I looked it up just to make sure I understood its precise meaning. To sojourn means to temporarily stay or reside in a place that is not one's home. Here are a few synonyms for the word sojourner a patron, a transient, a pilgrim, a traveler. The Hebrew translation similarly conveys the basic idea that a sojourner is a person residing temporarily in a community and a place that is not primarily their own and is dependent on the goodwill of that community for their continued existence. Sojourners. The word comes from two words the word alongside, and the word house. It means to have one's home alongside others. These are people who live in a foreign country where they have no citizenship rights. Their home is somewhere else. They are pilgrims and foreigners among citizens of the world. And guess what, dear friend? That would be us. That would be our status. We, the sons and daughters of God, are sojourners here on earth. 1 Peter 2.11 confirms this statement. It says, Dear friends, as sojourners and foreigners, be careful to live appropriately among your unbelieving neighbors, that they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Here are Apostle Paul's words. 
For our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who, by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, he will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Philippians 3, 20 and 21. Perhaps the most profound verses about sojourners are found in Hebrews chapter 11. It's here that the author makes a list of some, not all by any means, some of the most famous sojourners of biblical record. I'll start with God's chosen leader, Abraham, beginning at verse 8. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going, and even when he reached the land God promised him, he lived there by faith, for he was like a foreigner living in tents. And so did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise. Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. And I think the highlight verses in Hebrews 11 might be verses 13 through 16. It's these. All these people died still believing what God had promised them. They hadn't yet received what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth. Obviously, people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. If they had longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back. But they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. A particular sojourner not mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11 is one of my favorites in the Bible. Her name was Ruth, of the book of Ruth. The touching story begins with a famine in the land of Israel during the time of the judges. Elimelech and his wife Naomi, along with their two sons, leave Bethlehem in search of food in the foreign land of Moab. They had become strangers, sojourners in a strange land. There, Naomi's husband dies, and her two sons take on Moabite wives. Then both sons die, and Naomi is left alone with her two daughters-in-law, Orpah and Ruth. Naomi decides to return to Israel and urges both women to remain in their homeland of Moab. But Ruth refuses to leave her mother-in-law. Instead, she faithfully chooses to leave her homeland and follow Naomi to Israel. Ruth is now a sojourner, seeking refuge in another country. In short time, while gleaning in the fields outside Bethlehem, Ruth finds favor with a man named Boaz, a worthy and kind relative of Naomi's late husband. In chapter 2, we read of the encounter between Ruth and Boaz. It says, Then Ruth fell on her face, bowing to the ground, and said to Boaz, Why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me, since I am a foreigner? But Boaz answered her, All that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told to me, and how you left your father and mother and your native land and came to a people that you didn't know before. The Lord repay you for what you have done and a full reward be given you by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Ruth 2, 10 through 12. This remarkable servant-hearted young woman had put her own country behind and put her own uncertainties aside, and had found her reward and refuge under the wings of God. She had become a sojourner, and she was blessed by God for doing it. I have sometimes wondered, did Ruth live long enough to hold her great-grandson in her arms? Of this, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that the future great king, David, had a whole lot of his great-grandmother's strong character inside him. Interesting. Ruth's great 
grandson King David would one day say these words, I am only a sojourner on this earth. Dear friend, I believe the Holy Spirit did whisper the word sojourner to me yesterday. And I believe it's because he cares so much for you and me and our welfare. He knows the world can be a frightening and uncertain place and one we can't control. So he wants us to pause whenever necessary and take a deep breath and breathe in peace. I believe he wants us to be unleashed from the dark force of uncertainties and remember that we are to be servant-hearted, kingdom-representing sojourners in this temporary and foreign land and to always remember that we are citizens of heaven. And take comfort in this thought, my friend. We sons and daughters of God will always be alive, either while passing through this temporary foreign land or when we arrive in our heavenly homeland. We will always be alive, but the very best is yet to come. Now, back to that July day and night in 1978, when Kathy prayed and read her Bible at home, and I did the same thing out alone in the wilderness. Around midnight, as I sat next to the campfire with flashlight in hand, I reread everything I had written earlier in the day in the spiral notebook I had brought along with me. I was astounded by the scriptures I had felt prompted to read and write down, and then by the words I was hearing in my inner ear. I had written pages of what I was interpreting as instruction from God. Reading the last words I had written was a jaw-dropping moment, and I spoke these words out loud. Father, are you saying we're to leave Montana? And he said, yes. When God led us up the highway to Montana six years before, he had turned Kathy and me into sojourners. He had brought us to a place that wasn't ours and where we had become dependent on the goodwill of a loving community for our continuing existence. We had been so blessed by God. And now God was telling me it was time for another journey. Early the next morning, I was excited to take the 10-mile walk home. As soon as I got there, I went straight up to Kathy and said, Honey, God spoke to me in the forest. She said, He spoke to me too. I said, I think God wants us to move to Hawaii. Kathy answered, I know. That's what he said to me too. God had clearly spoken the same thing to both of us. Kathy and I were to become sojourners again. It was clear to us both that we were to move our family to Kona, Hawaii, and to join hands with a community of youth with a mission. And little did we know that this next sojourn would become the pathway, not too much later, to the fulfillment of a dream, an encampment in the mountains, which would be called Youth with a Mission, Montana. Thank you, Father in Heaven. Dear friend, let's remember that you and I are sojourners on earth. Let's make the very best and most of it. Let's take a deep breath, dig down, and fearlessly continue on our journey all the way until the day that we walk alive into our Father's house. We can do this. We will do this. Dear Father, God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Ruth, we are so honored to be among your sons and daughters. Give us the confidence and the fortitude to press on in the service of your kingdom while here in this foreign land, where we are sojourners. And give us eyes to keep looking forward toward our heavenly homeland in the distance. Let it be. You've been listening to In Moments Like These with David Graham. If you'd like to contact David or find out more information about In Moments Like These, please visit InMomentsLikeThese.com.